Hey YouTube, Beaton Love with Chilly Head and welcome to part two of my journey into modular synthesis. Thank you very much for joining me on this journey. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about how to plan your synth, how to plan your build and um, just going through all of the various different options that are out there. Where on earth does one begin? Um, that's one of the things which is really um, most daunting for people who are complete newbies like myself, who are getting into uh, modular Euro rack for the first time. Um, there are so many things out there, so many entirely different directions where you can take your, your build. Um, how on earth do you get started? Uh, well, I was completely um, unsure of this for a very long time and it took me um, really ages to, to, to discover exactly what I wanted to do with my synth. And to do that, um, I used a lot of different resources which are available to everyone out there. Um, and so I'm just going to signpost you to um, a few of those right now, which I really do feel will help anyone who's starting to uh, plan uh, a Euro rack synth for the first time. Um, check out a couple of websites first of all. Um, I've seen lots of uh, different people signposting uh, everyone to a site called Modular Grid and um, for a long time I was skeptical. Um, I didn't really uh, know how it was going to help me and I kind of thought to myself oh, I can't be bothered to check out a, uh, you know signing up to a website or anything like that. How on earth is that going to help me? Uh, but I was completely wrong. It really does help. Um, you know, I'm not uh, plugging this this site, you know, I'm not sponsored by them by any stretch of the imagination, but I, I, I do want to tell you guys that it really did help me. What Modular Grid allows you to do is it allows you to set up a, um, a an electronic copy of, a, of the rack that you'll be using. So if you have, for example, a 6U84HP rack, then it gives you an electronic uh, blank rack, uh, empty rack for you to fill with modules and Modular Grid contains this massive database of pretty much every Eurorack module that you could possibly uh, think of or imagine. Um, so what it allows you to do is it allows you to move these modules into the empty rack and it calculates how much space you've taken up, how much power you're using up, all of that kind of stuff. And if you wanted to use it just as a resource for investigating different modules, it's really useful for that too, because not only does it have this list of, of the different modules available, but it has usually, in most cases, quite a, a lengthy and detailed description of what each module does and, 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 how, it, and, and how it works. Um, it has a, a, a sort of a, a ranking system of how popular each module is and how many racks it appears in and how many people are using them, which is also really good because usually if a lot of people are using specific modules then that tends to mean that they're they're probably quite good modules and quite useful and quite quality so um, it's a really useful uh, website to check out and another one that's really useful is uh, Muff Wiggler uh, where you can um, get some sort of opinions on things and share things in a forum as also you can on Modular Grid uh, that also contains a, a forum systems where you can you know uh, sort of share your um, hypothetical rack with everyone and uh, you can get asked for feedback and I've, I've had some really good feedback from from uh, from modular grid I must say um, people looking at my rack and giving me pointers about well maybe you could swap this one for something else and uh, you, you know maybe this one isn't quite the best idea for a startup maybe you could use this module instead so you know it's really given me lots of things to think about and I've definitely changed um, my intended rack from where it began uh, to where it now sits um, so um, that's definitely uh, you know so a, a website which I really do think you should check out that and Buffwigler as well also, YouTube. YouTube is a great resource um, for hints and tips uh, about getting into Eurorack. And I'm just going to give you guys a few shout outs um, of some YouTube channels that I really feel, um, particularly for the newbies, but also for, for people who are you know, quite experienced with Eurorack, you'll really find these uh, channels quite informative um, and entertaining as well. Uh, first up, we've got uh, a channel called The Tuesday Night Machines particularly for the newbies uh, out there. This uh, channel is really fantastic because not only do they have um, some really great Eurorack jams, um, but they do have this, uh, sis uh, this series of videos there which takes you through the basics of Eurorack synths. And I have 
watched some of those videos multiple times to try and get my head around what specific modules do, what I'm going to be needing, all that kind of thing. Um, so they've got a series on there that really does take you through um, you know, the, the basics of, of setting up a system and what different kind of modules do. So it's really worth checking out uh, the Tuesday Night Machines. Another one that you'll want to check out is Div Kid Music, all one word, Div Kid Music. He does some great reviews of um, specific modules in each of his videos. He goes into great depth about what they do and gives you examples of patches and all that kind of stuff as well, once again, as uh, different jam videos as well. So check out Div Kid Music. I've watched his videos a heck of a lot and he's really he really knows his stuff. He, he goes into great detail about what they do. So if you're having second thoughts about buying a specific module or whether you actually need it or not, um, then Div Kid is definitely one to check out. Uh, there's also a guy on YouTube called Raul Pina and he uses he runs two different um, YouTube channels, both dedicated to Hero Rack, but both dedicated um, to slightly different things. Um, you've got uh, Raul's uh, World of Synths, uh, which is uh, dedicated solely to Dirt for um, modules and Dirt for racks. So um, if you're wanting to start off with a Dirt for system, then you know that's definitely the place to go because that kind of has everything about Dirt for that there is to know. Um, and he also has a, another channel called Modular Wild, uh, which is um, dedicated to synths, uh, sorry, to, to modules uh, and components that are. Uh, separate to Zephyr, so you know, mutable instruments and um, Richter and all that different stuff. Um, you, you know, he's got all the different modules um, from all the different manufacturers on there. So, whether you want to go down the dirt for route or you want to go down uh, a mixed route of all different kinds of manufacturers, then definitely um, check out Modular Wild. Um, and uh, let's see who else is there. Yeah, there's, there's one final one I just wanted to mention to you guys Flux302 of fluxwithit.com, um, a really experienced producer. Um, who run, also runs the Producers Hangout, um, but the, his particular channel of Flux 302 uh, uh, is heavily geared towards Eurorack and once again he gives you some great reviews of some modules, gives you some demos of some patches and how they actually work, and also um, the old Jam Hero 2 as well. So there's a handful of uh, really great YouTube channels to go for um, if you are looking for um, hints and tips about how to get into Eurorack. Obviously there are tons more and I can't go into all of them here but those are just a handful of the ones that I watch regularly um, that I found the most informative and entertaining as well so hopefully you guys will too. But aside from the different resources you can find to use um, I think it's just it's really important to think heavily about the direction that you want to take your rack in. Um, I think first of all when you're buying your case or, or, or making your own case if that's the direction that you go down um, it's important to make your case bigger than you would initially think. Um, it definitely won't be enough to buy a 3U case um, unless you are um, using more, uh, going down the desktop synth route and then you're trying to just expand a little bit with, with a small modular. Um, if you're trying to build a standalone unit which will be the, the core of your setup, the core of your production studio, then I would say at least 6U, um, definitely you'll find, I think, that this, regardless of how big your case is, you'll probably end up buying more, you'll probably end up expanding, you know, uh, going to 9U and possibly higher. So um, think about expandability, and I would definitely recommend at least 6U if you are starting out. Also think about the, uh, the direction of the sound you want to go in. Um, initially, the kind of sound I was thinking I would probably go for was a kind of an experimental drone, uh, based kind of noise um, sort of synth um, and that's kind of morphing slightly as I sort of plan my module and start to buy things you know it's uh, it is evolving it's certainly evolving but definitely having a fixed direction of where you want to go is definitely uh, a really um, good idea you know um, for example um, do you want to go for a, percu a percussion um, rack you know um, because if you're going to do that you're going to need lots of triggers um, there's lots of really great percussion modules out there now um, but maybe if you're just starting out if you wanted to get a mixture of percussion and you know other kind of synth voices then you know you might struggle to fit everything into a 16 case to do it effectively you know so um, do you want to go down the effects route do you want to go down the more experimental route do you want to create more traditional or sort of classic synth sounds um, 
it's a really good idea to know what kind of direction and what kind of sound you want to go down, uh, what kind of route you want to go down, uh, so that you can make the best use of the space you have and not just fill it with random modules, because if you try and do that, you'll probably end up with a bit of a mess of, uh, of things that probably don't quite work so well together. So, like I say, planning ahead is really uh, worthwhile. And check out some some, some Eurorack uh, artists. You know, check out people like, for example, Richard Devari, who's very popular at the moment. Check out what they do. He's got a great uh, couple of videos uh, on YouTube where he talks about um, his the setup that he used for, uses for live rigs. Um, look at uh, look at other people like um, Surgeon, for example, who combines Eurorack uh, with more uh, traditional um, sort of. Uh, desktop synths like the uh, the Electron uh, gear that's out and really popular at the moment. Um, you know, so check out artists, see what they're doing, see what kind of direction they're, they're going down, see what kind of modules they're using and evolve your own ideas from that. Um, so <laughs> like I say, one of the things that is the most daunting about um, getting into your rack is the sheer um, choice, the, the sheer volume of different modules and, and capabilities of different components that are out there. So. Um, you know, it's there are so many different directions to go down that you really do need to plan uh, what you want to do, and what you want to get out of your system. Um, so, you know, even going beyond that, you can go into the, the more specifics of, you know, do you want to start by even building your own case? You know, plenty of people do that these days. It's perfectly, uh, it's a perfectly legitimate way of doing it. You know, and you can, you know, tailor it to your own needs. You know, you can make it as big or as small as you want and uh, you know, possibly cut down on some of the costs as well. You know, some of these pre-built cases can be quite expensive, you know, depending on how big and, and what kind of quality you go for. Um, but it can be, um, if, if you have that sort of DIY um, sort of uh, thing about you, you know, you know you've got the, some standard sort of DIY skills, then maybe you do want to go down the, uh, the, the building your own route. And there are also plenty of uh, DIY modules out there as well, which you can, uh, you try your hand back if you're handy with a soldering iron, that kind of thing. Personally, I don't feel confident enough to do that myself. Um, I'm sure it prob probably would be something I could get the hang of, but um, you know, I'm, I'm probably going down more of the pre built route myself. Um, but that's just each to his own, and I can imagine that you know, building your own rack and uh, soldering your own uh, modules together would be. Uh, really rewarding, give you a really nice sort of sense of achievement, you know, sort of making you think that you've gone through um, the whole building process <laughs> literally as, as much as you could do from start to finish pretty much. Um, so as I say, there are loads of different things you can do with Renewal Rack, which is one of the most daunting, but also one of the most appealing things about it. And um, now I've started on my journey into Euro Rack, I really couldn't imagine um, doing much else to be honest. It's the most exciting part of um, production that I've stumbled across so far. Uh, there was an exciting part of electronic music and electronica and uh, certainly building my rack is going to be absolutely fantastic fun and I can't wait to share it all with you further. So thank you once again for watching. This has been my little hints and tips guide to planning your Euro rack and uh, taking it in a specific direction. Uh, and I hope you found it useful. Uh, next time I'll be joining you hopefully next week uh, when I'll be talking about uh, actually starting my build and getting my first case, which is really exciting. Can't wait to try that guys. So I'll be bringing you my case next time and I'll see you all soon once again on Music Monday. Catch you later.